Well, let me start the discussion on the topic of youth and their involvement on the European election. If we look at the data on the last election, 2019, we have over 50% of European citizens voting in the European elections with large increase in youth participation. However, despite the increase in youth participation and higher voter turnout, less than half of the young population voted in this election, which quite is a reflection of the absence of youth uh, from the EU institutional politics. Um, the data from the European Parliament also mentioned that young Europeans today participate less than the other age group and also less than the other cohorts of young people decades ago. I want to get to you, Ismail. What would you say the reason for this? Why do you think there is a lack of youth participation in the election process, despite considerable amount of uh, young people joining the political activism? Like We observe a lot of uh, participation in movements such as Fridays for Futures, for instance. Well, it is true that, on one hand, there is a bit more of, quote-unquote, I'm very careful using these quotes, of uh, political participation of people around Europe, but uh, through a Eurobarometer survey, the main reason why young people did not vote, at least by 60% of those that didn't, was that it was mainly for practical reasons. Let's say that there are quite a lot, of, a few barriers, let's say, logistical barriers mainly, that impede young people from voting. So it's not as much as they're not interested in politics, um, per se, in a, in, a, in a very wide manner, when you can go from voting or political activism or even volunteering or whatever your way of, uh, of youth participation is, it's mainly because of practical and logistical reasons. And those are things that we are bringing up um, as much as we can to say we need to facilitate the voting process for all the population, of course, but our main concern is young people so they can actually have um, the, the, well, the right to vote or use that right, let's say, and make the most of it. Could you perhaps concretely explain what these uh, logistical barriers are with regards to the European election and the young people? Well, the easiest one I can say, when you right now when you turn 18, but although we do advocate for a voting age at 16, so that's a different conversation, but it's the same, um, it's the same issue. When you, when you turn 16 and you turn 18, some countries you can already vote at 16, um, you have all these, let's say, new rights that you acquire for becoming an adult. And everything that comes with it, it's super complicated, and there's not an actual like, starter pack, if, for lack of a better term to call it, on how to engage in all of these things. So it's mainly lack of knowledge or lack of will from from the politicians, let's say, or, or the governments or the institutions to give all the tools for young people. So I believe that they will need like a kind of starter pack to say, okay, how you can vote, where do you need to go to register, um, what are different processes? And also we believe that digitalizing the whole voting process, there are some of the issues att attached to that, but the main reason is so it can be more accessible. Uh, especially when you're, for example, if you're in a rural area and you don't really have access to a voting poll uh, near you or you have to move to quite some place. And uh, there, are, there, there are ways of, um, of working around this, but um, I think that's the best example that I can give, just lack of accessibility and, and lack of knowledge and lack of will, let's say, to provide that knowledge to the people that actually just acquired the right to vote. You already explained about the lack of knowledge and also accessibility. What do you think about loss of confidence of the youth or European youths to the... EU in general, does that also contribute to the lack of youth participation in elections? It's a question around dissonance in political discourse between young people mm -hmm. and, and, and what happens in politics. Um, yes, yes, quite a bit, I do believe also. Um, so, like we said again, we are the biggest platform of youth organizations in the world, we're the platform of platforms, and we give everything that we do is based on what the membership tells us, right? So we have our internal governing processes. So everything that, that we come up with, that we say, we don't just bring out here because we're in a secretariat in Brussels and, and we think, no, no, we have our statutory meetings, we have our, um, our working groups, we have our task forces. So all of this information com comes essentially from grassroots level young people that tells us that these are the issues. And around that question, it's mainly because politicians, let's say, or the high levels don't really listen to what young people actually want to see from them. So when they've been demanding the same thing year and year and over and over again, and they don't see any change, i give a few examples maybe when it comes to climate change, for instance, um, they just completely disconnect, let's say, completely from the political discourse, and they find their own political processes. We have our um, internal process, actually, with institutions, for instance, the youth dialogue, and that is one of a very good 
let's say, tool, platform, program, whatever you want to call it, series of conferences and, uh, and activities that national youth councils undertake um, and international non-governmental youth organizations also, although it's, it's a smaller delegation um, around Europe, to actually do implement and give policy recommendations to decision makers from EU institutions to see what, to what they want to see. So maybe a bit more of connection between the process that we have with civil society, with international non-governmental youth organizations, and the actions that leaders and politicians must take um, in order to apply what we've actually been demanding for, for so many years. And again, we have documents and documents, so we, we give a lot out, actually, a lot of information of things that politicians can do. Some listen, some don't. Uh, we'd hope to have a larger conversation around with everyone, really, with, with as many people as are actually willing to implement all of this, and that's why the elections next year are very, very important. Um, so that's pretty much it. We, we already have our work. We, we have our conferences. We have our dialogues. We have our task forces. We have our policy dialogues, essentially. We engage with policy dialogues all throughout last year with every single EU commissioner. So, so they are aware of the information, just that they need to apply it. And if they apply it, if they open themselves a bit more to conversations with young people and with our youth organizations and our platform, I really do believe uh, there will be a little bit more trust or building the trust. Trust is very easily lost and very, uh, let's say, it's, it's very difficult to get to get it back. And I think that's, that's what's been happening with young people. It's not like they're less active, but they are more disconnected from, from political discourse. So it's important to maintain this political yeah. trust. And yeah. you already mentioned about the concrete uh, actions that is done by the European Youth Forum. Uh, with the political youth dialogues and so on, but it's only a matter of um, then the political will from the top.